appreciate you being here. Thank you so very, very much. Now, my Tolumnia, no ID, we call her Carmen here in Ninja Orchids. She looks like one of the beautiful little Spanish flamenco dancers in their dresses, but that's not here nor there. This is a Tolumnia in my basket and lava rock setup, which has worked fabulously over the past years. But yeah, there's that word again. Look what's going on here. A beautiful new growth coming out of the basket. Unfortunately, it's going to come against the basket. Now, in my cleanup of the tolumnias and repositioning them into the center of the basket, because look, I've got plenty of space here. You know, why is she not growing that way? Well, you know, orchids do what orchids do. But in that video, I was uncertain. I didn't know what I wanted to do, so I made a decision not to make a decision for that specific video. Now that I've thought about it, I've made a decision. And what we're going to do is open up the basket so that I can pull her out. And that would sound pretty straightforward and simple. Just go in with your pliers and peel it away. But we can be a bit more constructive about that. And also with the choice of what's going to come next. Because you can see right here, I have the option of another basket that she can fit into. And I have the option of going semi-hydro as well, if that is what I want to do and if that's preferable. Now, to me, preferably, I want her back into a wire basket. And if I were to put her into this basket, I need to switch her, not just because I'm going to be unbending her old basket, but because this basket has four sides, whereas her other basket has six you see yeah if i need to maneuver her back into this basket i need a lot more space to try and get her back in because i doubt very very much that i'm going to be touching the root ball at all that is the plan anyway so enough of the jibber jabber let's get to it and see how this goes before we just attack the basket willy-nilly and <laughs> just get into it Let's have a look at what would make sense the most. And if you're seeing things being washed out, it's because I'm using a filter. I'm in the shade on the east side because I'm not sure how well my transmitter will hold up to the hot sun. And I don't know how long this is gonna take. Now, my first thought is do it from the back. Open it up and bring the orchid out this way, not worrying about the new growth at all. Everything is safe back here. But that's a lot of distance to cover. And the whole point is to protect the new growth and the rest of the orchid to weave all of this through these two spaces right here would be a little bit cumbersome and possibly I would snap some leaves. Now, they might not look that pretty, but for now, I wanna protect what I've got here. So yeah, the logical thought of working with the back and pulling her out that way that's out the window. It makes no sense to me. There's a lot more fiddle and a lot more risk that way. I know it sounds really weird, but uh, that's what I'm thinking. So what we're going to do is we are going in from the top. And what I need to do is undo just these two to my understanding right here and bend them outwards because the new growth is down there really bend them outwards and hopefully have created enough space because that would leave me all this part empty to pull her out root ball and all and then see if we can put her back into another basket huh. so let's go What I wanted to achieve is just be able to pull these apart. The weak links are down here, but in order for it to work properly, I need to pull the top apart as well. So that was what I was hoping to do. That's not working. It seems like this joint up here is pretty, pretty strong. I'm still going with it though, because that's the only option right now that I can see. And I'm going to start getting rid of the bottom here at least unhinging that. I have already seen it on other baskets come off relatively easily. And it would be just our luck that this is the one of the toughest baskets. <laughs> but it, that one worked for pretty well. That one didn't, it just came right off. 
Now, all my other Tolumnias that have growths coming out of the basket and growing out, they're doing fine. It's just that, you know, as the growths grow bigger, I kind of will lose the ability to do this without too much damage. So this is a great candidate to be testing this right now. And of course, I don't have the right tools to break it off, cut it properly. My little pliers are not going to be very, very useful. And yes, I've got spikes going and I really don't want to lose the spikes. But you see, this is coming off. If I can keep bending it. Now, if this one would come off just as easily, then I could fold it down like a, you know, like a little gate. Oh, here we go. Now we got to watch how well this has grown into and up. It hasn't. We want to make sure we don't bruise. There we go. <laughs> I know, I know. Right now, my main focus is on my Tolumnia that I'm dealing with. I will mourn the basket after I've done this successfully because yes, it is a big, big shame. Meanwhile, I do have other empty baskets. It's not like I don't have more, but I can't buy more. I can't find these anymore. These came from our Spanish version of a dollar store. Let's see if I can pop this one off just as well. Give me a little bit more of an opening. I mean, now, now that we're at it, you know, it's not like I can restore the basket. If I do less damage, it's not as if I can put it all back together again. I mean, the growth would have found a way. For sure. The other Tolumnias, the other examples I have, they prove that. The growth would have found a way. But while we're here, let's, you know, eventually the other ones will have to come out of their baskets at some point if they keep going in the direction and out of the basket. When the aerial roots start to grow, that's when I've got problems in my very, very dry climate. Let's see if we can be a little bit more greedy and get even more of an opening. Getting photobombed by a bloom. I already broke one bloom off. <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. These are projects where you've got to make your mind up and just keep going. There we go. Now, is our opening big enough? Maybe we can do something about this side, give us more flex. And I'm really hoping it's all in focus. <laughs> there we go. Right, exposed she is. We've done that much. Now let's see if we can wiggle her out. Yes. Yes. Oh, here she comes. With microfiber and all the microfiber I put down there basically to keep adding some humidity so that in my hot, dry winds circumstances, I will not be losing the roots too quickly at all, if at all possible. So I put microfiber on the bottom just for added humidity. Because as we know, these guys like a wet, dry cycle, but not a wet and crispy cycle. That's not what they like. Okay, as roots have grown into that microfiber, we're gonna leave it on, and we're gonna see if we want to fandangle her into here, which is looking less and less likely. <laughs> All right, let me get my lava rock. Let me salvage that. And let's see if we're gonna do this. Um, you guys, <laughs> it's okay getting a Tolumnia to grow around a basket and into a basket, but putting her back into a basket, yeah, that is, hmm, there's my new growth, even with the four sides, should I, should I? Oh, I don't want to just have all the Tolumnias now in that, in a pot setting. Hmm.
biggest resistance now is this spike. So, uh, I'm going to forfeit these blooms. How badly do I want this orchid in this basket is the question now. How badly? All right, we've got time. See if I can get her out again. And then we're gonna go in spike first. Bring all the leaves with us. Make sure that we are still in touch with what's happening to that new growth because if it wasn't for that one, this wouldn't be happening. <laughs> okay, we've got the microfiber. Let's see. Feed the spikes in through first. Why am I so pedantic about the spikes? Well, even if she doesn't continue to bloom or if she drops the blooms or I have just broken off blooms, I want her to have the energy that is in those spikes. They are substantial. Okay, I've tried. I've tried long enough. And there comes a time where I have to listen to my own voice and stop being stubborn, thinking I can do this. Not to the detriment of the orchid, I can't. So, into semi-hydro she goes. And we have to now remove the microfiber. Good to see that these roots are accustomed to a very, very wet environment. I don't care about my microfiber. I care about my roots. Okay, we're gonna leave that on. I'm gonna clean this up, get my media, and we'll pot her up into semi-hydro. have to admit that sometimes it's best just to think of the orchid and get away from wanting to be stubborn about my baskets. It was nice while it lasted. So back to dirty lecker as crocking at the bottom. Dirty as in I can't use it in a semi-hydro setup, but it is not dirty in such a fact that it is dusty and gross. I have washed and sterilized this. Now, in my last video, I had a lot of grit in my Akadama. That was because there was really nothing around the roots of the orchid that I potted into a semi-hydro setup. This orchid now has a lot of lava rock around it. So I have not mixed anything into the Akadama right now, but I've just noticed <laughs> that I might as well take out some of this old stuff in here while we're at it. Now that she's going into this setup, it's a completely different ball game with regards to dead decaying matter that could cause a problem. So that's good. You can take that old bit out and there's really not much more in here that has died. So back to potting her up. Where is that infamous new growth? <laughs> that started it all. <laughs> all right, we can go in here. And what I want to do is, let's get you in a bit closer. There we go. Now I'm going to put in some akadama at the bottom to help with the wicking. It's got to come up to where the roots are, but around the roots, it's not going to be much. Just so that the roots are kind of sitting on it, but the base of the orchid is well away from anything that is too water retentive. I like the look of that. I'm going to use my small lava rock that I had before and fill around the edges. Just the small stuff. I'm not going to go back in with the big stuff. I have plenty, plenty of small lava rock in my stash. I don't have nice chunky lava rock, enough of it anyways, in case I need it for something else. So we can recycle the small, put it back in, And then what I'm going to do now is fill around with even smaller lava rock. 
because that is water retentive, contrary to the fact that it is not wicking, but it is water retentive. And that is exactly what it means also to be in semi-hydro. Checking the position of my orchid, I want her nice in the middle. Put my tag in where the holes are. As a note to self, there we go. And now we fill her up. So I don't know if I finished my thought about the small lava rock. It is not wicking, but in its own right, so water retentive that it works in a semi-hydro setup. The Akadama will be the wicking agent right at the bottom, just so that the roots do have a lot of circulation, but they are not sitting soaking wet all the time. So pretty much, she's going into a setup that she's familiar with, lava rock, less airflow around her so she won't dry up as quickly, that's fine by me, but not to a degree that she doesn't have enough circulation around her roots. That's the plan. And lava rock is also a super dry medium for surface, which is important when it comes to telumnias and the base of the telumnias and why they would rot out very, very quickly if they went into a traditional semi-hydro setup with just leka around them. If there is a very high humidity area as well, all of that humidity, all of that water at the base, it all perpetuates rot at the base of a telumnia. Now, in my climate, that should have worked, but it didn't. I lost Tolumnias in the past doing a semi-hydro setup with LECA only. And I know I got the LECA ratio wrong. If you want to use LECA only and you don't want to be fussing around with another kind of media as lava rock, use small LECA for your Tolumnias. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but the small LECA is important for the small roots not to dry out at the surface and then possibly top dress. If you're in a very humid environment, top dress with something that does not retain water. And this is what lava rock does. It doesn't retain water. It will dry out very, very quickly in my climate at the surface, but the roots have a wet environment, which is also important. We will not get Tolumnia oregano roots. That is the plan. Now let's flush her through though, and make sure that our Akadama is nice and clean and get a reference point as to if the Akadama were to break down, our water will eventually run muddy, but that can take years and years and years. So we're watching the water coming out of this side and just giving ourselves a baseline of the color. Filling it up to the top, you can see the dust of the Akadama coming from the top. And it is a little bit on the brown side. And that is not the reflection of my rusty stand. Just need to get it a little bit more clear. I strain my Akadama all the time. First of all, I rinse it, but gently. I do not actually go and really manhandle my Akadama when I clean it out of the bag. I do rinse it and get that initial dust off. Then I let it dry completely. I don't like to work with wet Akadama. It turns to like a pasty clay. Oddly enough, when it's wet, in the stage that we saw it, like with granules, it will not go into a pasty mess. When you handle it, then it falls apart, but not under these circumstances. So after it has dried and before I use it in a pot, I then take it through a strainer in dry form and just shake it through like I would flour and let all the other fine dust continue to fall through. And only then do I use it. And you could still see puffs of dust coming up. And that is what I'm flushing away now, just to make sure that I have clear water coming out of the pot. Now, if in three or four years, this water starts to turn a muddy color, if it's not necessarily because of Sahara rain, <laughs> which I will know to differentiate, I know to distinguish one from the other, but that would then indicate my Akadama has broken down. However, in my climate, I do not get down to frost levels ever. So the lifespan of my Akadama is in actual fact indefinite. And that is why I like to use it so much, especially when it comes to lava rock needing a wicking agent and then being able to do its job. Now I am very disappointed, yes I am, to have another Tolumnia in semi-hydro. Me and my little baskets. But 
I really shouldn't complain. I really shouldn't complain because this Talumnia has grown beautifully over the past years and that is what orchid growing is all about. We want our orchids to get bigger. Unfortunately, it did not manage to get back into another little basket and unfortunately, the only other casualty we had throughout this repot was I lost a beautiful little bloom. There you go, that's better. This focus thing, hey? Yeah. So I hope that there were little nuggets of information in this video, if nothing else, maybe enjoyable, watching me trying to be stubborn and getting my orchid back into a basket. <sighs> yeah, speaking of losses, I forgot. Here is another bit of our loss, our carnage. Goodbye, basket. Hello, Semi-Hydro. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, you being here. Have yourselves a beautiful day and I look forward to seeing you hopefully in the next video. Take care. Bye.